give us an idea of your thinking there, first of all, sir. Christopher. <laughs> Well, basically what we're seeing is is that uh, as uh, the U.S.-China trade deficit has narrowed in 2019 and is likely to continue to narrow in 2020, the Chinese uh, trade surplus continues to rise by nearly a, by around $100 billion. So what that means is, is that uh, China is getting a much bigger trade surplus with other countries. Primarily that's coming from uh, other parts of Asia, but we're also seeing that in other parts of Europe. So it's, 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 it's a very different different scenario when other countries are looking to China to tap that market for investment dollars and now all of a sudden you're becoming a deficit country to China. That radically changes the political calculus for those countries. Doesn't China run a, a surplus anyway with many other countries and arguably that the, the, the incremental effect is that that surplus to others just simply increases a little bit if you spread it around? Well, actually, depending on depending on the country, it actually increases relatively significantly. In 2018, uh, China had was basically running a flat uh, flat trade scenario with with most of Asia. Um, in 2019, that number is likely to is is finishing at around 70 billion dollars. Um, for countries like uh, like Vietnam and and other parts of emerging Asia, that that's a big shift. Um, uh, Europe added uh, China added about 40 billion to its trade surplus plus with Europe. Um, these are not insignificant numbers for a lot of uh, for a lot of these countries and it's 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 really changing the thinking if, if we can't uh, if we can't tap the Chinese trade market like we want um, we need to we need to look at our partnership with China very differently. Yeah the whole issue of import substitution then comes into play. Who gets hit the most then? I mean some people are saying it's it could be Europe it could be Australia if Beijing actually buys more U.S. goods are other countries at the expense then? Yes, absolutely. You, you, because otherwise, if, 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 if China is displacing uh, European or Brazilian soybeans, for instance, um, to purchase U.S. soybeans, um, that's, going, that's going to clearly upset uh, Brazil. So the question is, is, is China going to increase its total import intake or is it going to simply displace other goods? Um, the likely scenario is, is that they displace other goods uh, to purchase U.S. goods, and that's also going to upset countries with uh, they might be upset with China, but they're, clearly their fundamental dispute will be with the United States. Chris, who won? I think if you look at it uh, just on the deal, uh, you, you'd have to say that based upon who gave away what, um, that the U.S. won. Um, the Trump administration really only agreed to roll back uh, tariffs from about 21 percent uh, on average to 19 percent. Um, there's a lot more restrictions uh, and uh, requirements on what the Chinese side is going to do. Um, however, fundamentally, as has been pointed out, I think it's, it's accurate, um, a lot of the big issues that uh, the Trump administration really wants to target, uh, such as market access more broadly, where firms can compete on a level playing field, um, those are definitely saved for phase two. So I think you'd have to say um, you'd have to give uh, round one a little bit to the Trump administration, but uh, the fight is really just ramping up.